August 2011, 1,716 male and 6 male females, totaling 1,722 beneficiaries, were reintegrated with a grand ceremony at the President's house. His Excellency the President, Honorable Mahindra Rajapaksha, graced the occasion as the chief guest. Large number of ministers, ambassadors, high commissioners, diplomats, government officials, and Triforce commanders were present at the occasion. Kumar Avail Kirubaharan, Mede Kibarangal, Parraja Singham Rajidha. Ivergil Varumbur, our petrol gadim, Mede Kibarumar, Janadi Badi Avergil, Ket Kolgra, Mede Kibarangal. Sila Pilar Gil, Petro Mopadi Kepadi Rikargal, Yenabe Petro Mediki Varatan Bendum Selvadurai Tangara Dasan Tangarasa Niranjan Samogatodu Vinayind Petro Ren Burdunoki Pogandar Nadaraja Ishwaran Close monitoring on reintegrated rehabilities for a minimum of six months period is utmost important. Hence, Secretary Forces and the local police authorities monitored the reintegrated ex combatants on personalized fashion down to the village level. Simultaneously, a comprehensive aftercare program is implemented by the government to substantiate the successful reintegration into the community. Ladies and gentlemen, let's come on to the lessons learned from all this process. I will start with lessons on rehabilitation process. Transformation from an offensive force in the interest of the national security into humanitarian service operator with the end of the war made Sri Lankan forces stand unique in the way in which they embrace the role of rehabilitation. It's heartening to know that Sri Lanka's rehabilitation program conducted by the Sri Lanka Army is considered one of the best experimented within the region. Separating ex combatants from ordinary IDPs was skillfully executed by the security forces, which subsequently led both winning confidence of the ex combatants as well as the IDP population. Both groups felt that the armed conflict had come definitively to an end and that they could now be hopeful. Rehabilitation was the pathway towards national reconciliation and nation building. Well designed rehabilitation program by the Sri Lanka Army, which developed to suit the religious and cultural needs values, customs, traditions, and aspirations of Tamil-speaking community helped to carve out a model of understanding diversity among the ethnic and religious groups. Initial rehabilitation program, programs were geared towards opening the hearts and minds of beneficiaries, helping them to live in secure environment with enough time for stock taking, for enabling them to rediscover their life skills and education. The majority responded well, which was evidenced through their active participation. There was a solid understanding of the needs of the children and the ethos was, let the child be a child. They were the first to be re resettled with their parents. The overwhelming joy we have witnessed in this reunion of the conscripted children was sense of lost and found for both child and the parents. It was obvious that the former cadres were indoctrinated with vicious and fabricated stories about the security forces and had developed a deep hatred and vengeance-pronged attitude. 
Hence, it was vital for the beneficiaries to be exposed to the uniform they were groomed to hate and discover for themselves that the military was there to protect, safeguard its citizens, and uphold the values of the nation. And coming on to the lessons on the monitoring. The centers were sheltered only with 500 members each for the close monitoring and identification of individual behavior and to assess their level of radicalization. This segregation made intelligence agencies to do their identification without difficulties. Conduct of psychosocial and socioeconomic profiling developed a system for intelligence agencies to monitor ex-combatants during community rehabilitation phase. Timely conducted community awareness programs cleared the doubts and uncertainties of normal public on beneficiaries. This gave confidence to the beneficiaries to go back home without any fear. And lessons on the national policy. Promulgation of a national policy with a separate ministry that fully understands the importance and seriousness of rehabilitation that is quick to take decisions is vital. Because we believe it is one of the key ingredients of the national reconciliation. Introduction of aspects of rehabilitation and disaster management into curriculums of security forces would be essential in the future. Preparing highly trained civilian contingency to take the rehabilitation of take the responsibility of executing the national policy on rehabilitation and disaster management is essential. Sri Lankan model of rehabilitation of ex-combatants, which is initiated, designed, developed, and implemented by the Sri Lanka Army, should be disseminated around the world as a successful model to follow. Ladies and gentlemen, in the final analysis, the Sri Lanka Army must be commended for conceiving, designing, developing and implementing a very successful rehabilitation model, which resulted in total reintegration of over 11,000 ex-combatants to society within just three years after three decades of war. It's a unique experience and a learning process to all armies in the world. Let me show you some of the pictures of the transition. You can see from then to now. In conclusion, let me tell you a small story. During the latter stages of the rehabilitation process, a Tamil-speaking delegation from overseas visited few rehabilitation centers. They interacted with a number of beneficiaries, and at the end of their visit, one beneficiary came forward and gave this note to the delegation. Let me translate it for you. This is his thought. We fought for the liberation of Tamil people. We will not accept the same people pose a problem for us. In the future, we want all races of people to live peacefully. Stop the battle with the government and work for the benefit of the people. Releasing of Rehabilities gets affected by unnecessary overseas agitations, abandoned conflicts, and work towards reconciliation. We know the pain of war. We will not allow our children to experience the same pain. If possible, work towards the peace and unity. And ladies and gentlemen, finally he went on to say this.
we no, no longer want Elam from abroad. It was Pierre Newton on 20th January 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your patient listening, and if there's any questions, I'm willing to answer.